Hello again. So, after years of doing those health challenges I've been doing, I have come into a good relationship with food. I think food might be the one. Don't tell my wife. And because I like to consider myself a helpful dude, I've compiled seven lessons that I've learned about how to just eat better without worrying too much about it. You worry too much. Calm down. First lesson, I don't make goals. Oh my god, what? If I had to narrow down the reasons why I want to eat healthier, they are to look good, to feel good, to live long, and to enjoy life. Okay, now I'm realizing feel good and enjoy life are kind of the same thing. It's fine. It's fine. Also, many of you know that my real goal is to become the all-seeing, all-knowing space baby at the center of the universe, but we're not gonna talk about that right now, even though we just did. Point is, all of those reasons are hard to measure and there's no finish line. How do I know when I feel good enough? Like, do I have feel good points? I wish life were like an RPG. And what does it even mean to look good? Some people don't even like beards. Ah! No, just kidding, that's impossible. And some of those reasons run counter to each other. Like it feels good to just eat whatever I want and damn the consequences. And there's no guarantee that eating better will lead to a longer life. Sometimes you just die for other reasons. It's really stupid. And it's one of the things I will put an end to on day one as Space Baby. In fact, it's first on my list. Second on my list, uh, bring back Firefly. And it doesn't necessarily feel good to worry about looking good all the time. Like, you have any idea how long I worked on my hair today? You know how long it takes to polish this spot? So rather than think about these things as goals, I just try to think about how I can sustain a healthy life. But that doesn't mean be perfect all the time. Not everyone can be like me. <laughs> no, what I mean is I'm not thinking about self-improvement like you start down here in Shirtville and then straight line out to kittens and unicorns. That would be a perfect world for my four year old. I hang out with a four year old a lot lately. But it's more like waves of kittens and unicorns and shirt all at the same time. If you had a bunch of kittens and unicorns, there would be shirt. In other words, developing systems so that I have a newer, better normal. Relevant quote time. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems from Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he couldn't have been more so. <laughs> Next thing I do, I try to eat what they say you're supposed to. This greatly depends on what you mean by they and supposed to. It's complicated. Every time I bring up specific things I eat or try to eat or that people say is good, you will find comments that say, no, eat this instead. How do you guys figure out how to yell in comments? Like, I don't even know how to do an audio comment. But yes, I'm glad you have found things that work for you. I have found what works for me, and in general, I'm trying not to be very restrictive. Try to eat protein and fiber because it's filling and protein is good for healing the muscles when you work out. Try to eat fruits and vegetables because they have good fiber. Yes, per fruit has sugar in it, but that's fine. Other than fruit, I try to avoid foods that have lots of sugar in it, but I also try to enjoy myself. I especially try to avoid dessert for breakfast. There's an awesome Johnny Harris video you should watch about why do Americans eat dessert for breakfast. I have eggs and beans almost every day for breakfast. A little later, maybe an apple and peanut butter if I want to have a little bit of something sweet. I drink my coffee black. I just have liked it that way for a long time. Cause I'm a badass. But that's helpful as well. I always have a water bottle with me so that I'm never alone. I love you, Engelbert Humper drink. Ever since the first video China and I did of quitting added sugar for a month, I may have had uh, one whole can of soda. I don't drink any sweet drinks. I don't drink juice. I don't drink soda. I'm just telling you what I do and what has worked. I'm not saying this is what everyone has to do. Also, currently China and I are in the middle of a year of no alcohol, which has helped. And I try to have healthy snacks around. One good snack to have around. The sponsor of this video, Daily Harvest. It's a really easy, quick, delicious, and quick way to get those things I was just talking about. Fruits, vegetables, protein, and fiber. It's amazing how I forgot how to say those things in a matter of minutes. It's a prepped container of culinary resplendence delivered right to your door with a flexible weekly or monthly plan of nine to 26 items ready to enjoy in minutes. Mm, what about gluten? There's gluten-free. Mm, what about lactose? There's dairy-free. Mm, what about no meat? There's plant-based. What about gums, preservatives, or artificial anything? They don't use it. What about Bob. Surprisingly, that's one of the few Bill Murray movies I haven't seen. I probably should have seen that by now. I like Richard Dreyfuss, too. There's over 100 options for any time of day, even 2.30, but that's usually when I go to the dentist. I use Daily Harvest because it fits perfectly into my eating style of grabbing healthy snacks when I'm hungry throughout the day. If I'm feeling a little sluggish while I'm working on my latest masterpiece, I can grab an acai and cherry smoothie, as opposed to what I did BDH before Daily Harvest. Slap myself in the mirror for like 10 minutes. My face feels so much better. Thanks, Daily Harvest. And they got a great new option for dinner that I, even a doorknob like me can make in 20 minutes. Harvest Bakes. Four unique flavors, zero mess, gluten-free, dairy-free, and allergen-free options for tree nut allergic dinguses like myself. Mother Earth, if you're watching, they focus on compostable and recyclable packaging, farm frozen foods, reducing food waste, and transitional organic farming. Did you see that transition? It was a metaphor for transitional organi organic farming. Click the link below and use the code WheezyWaiter to get up to $40 off your first 
Daily Harvest box. Now, to lesson three. Lesson three, I restrict to learn. Yes, I've done a lot of restrictions in videos you've seen. No sugar for a month, intermittent fasting, paying attention to water, no coffee, walking a certain amount of steps, going vegan, no alcohol. I've never done keto. I know a lot of you are gonna suggest keto or no carb or carnivore or other stuff, and maybe I'll try those at some point, but I use diets to create habits. I don't think that they're forever. Nothing lasts forever. Rest in peace, Abraham Drinking. And I've learned that most habits will last a little while and then they kind of go away. And then I'll revisit. It's an ongoing process of learning what I'm capable of. And I think it gets a little better each time. I have been eating less sugar. I had been drinking less alcohol. Well, now I'm drinking no alcohol again, but you know what I mean. Intermittent fasting had a profound effect on my eating habits. I think I do a lot less mindless snacking in general because of it, because I have gotten comfortable with just going long periods of time without eating anything. I do little mini challenges that I guess you could call diets. And there's almost always lingering positive effects after I do them. But I don't expect that I will just be perfect forever. I'm not gonna do them all the time. I don't wanna be an asshole to myself. Although some days my asshole might appreciate it. Anyway, lesson number four. I measure only when it matters. There are periods of time when I say to myself, all right, Craigo, that's how I refer to myself. Let's try to lose some weight. And in those times, I will count calories. There's lots of good apps out there you can use. Check out www.google.com to find them and weigh myself every day. But if I'm not talking to good old Craigo about losing weight, then I'm not gonna measure. Because I don't want to just have some unnecessary stress like, oh, I had too many calories. Oh, my weight's not going down. Plus, you don't want to talk to Craigo when you don't have to. It's like he's always got an answer for everything. He's always trying to tell you stupid little jokes. He's so stupid. Also, another way to measure is by measuring, you know, your muscles and your waist, which I should do. I don't really, but I should. I'm just telling you what I do and don't. There's almost always a better solution out there, but perfect is the enemy of the good, and don't worry about it too much because then you'll quit and then ab -a -dab -a -dab -a -dab. I know some people are against counting calories because not all calories are equal. Different foods do different things, but in the times that I've done it and doing it to learn, it has worked for me. Different rubrics for different food, you know what I'm saying? And the many times that I have counted calories has taught me a lot about how many calories are in each food. So these days I think I can kind of just intuit how much food I need and what kind of food I need because of that caloric knowledge. Anyway, the point is, I only measure when I'm in a phase where I'm actually trying to accomplish something. Lesson five, I pay attention to how I feel. You could call this mindful eating or intuitive eating. You could call it Carl if you want. Weirdo. Basically, I try to eat slower and stop eating when I don't feel hungry. Seems obvious, but I used to have a mindset where I felt like I had to clear my plate all the time. And for a while there, I was going out to eat a lot. Some places serve pretty big portions and you probably should not clear your plate. Doesn't have to go to waste. Refrigeration exists. I've mostly eliminated that mindset now. I actually pretty often only eat half my food when I go out to a restaurant. And I eat slowly because it. they say it takes about 20 minutes after eating before you will feel full. Also, alcohol can numb the feeling of being full, and now that I've quit alcohol, I notice myself being full a lot more. I also used to feel like I had to hit every meal. I gotta eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I think this can go either way. Some people will advise you to plan out your meals. Some people say snacking throughout the day is a better way to go. Some people say the earth is flat. I really think this is just a trial and error thing. And for me, making sure I hit each meal is a worse way to go. That said, I do pretty much have the same breakfast every day. Eggs and beans for life! Cluck, cluck, <laughs> motherfucker. And then a normal sized dinner almost every day. It's the middle part of the day that's the lawless country. Yeehaw! Meaning I just kind of pay attention to how I feel and snack when I'm hungry while riding a horse. And I try to make sure that there's healthy snacks around. Maybe some fruit, maybe some carrots, maybe some oatmeal. And I remember to share with my horse. Another helpful tip for mindful eating and eating slow is pay attention to your flavor. Chew your food a lot and really enjoy it. Only eat. Don't look at your phone or do something else while you're eating. Think about it. Think about where it came from. Well, depending on where you're eating, you might not want to know. Pretend to be a super snobby food connoisseur in your mind. Mmm, notes of leather, elderberry jam, slathered on the back of a turtle. In short, pay attention. Lesson number six. I move. No, not my bowels, but I do move those as well. I run three to five times a week and I exercise three to five times a week. Why does this help my eating habits? I'm not sure. It burns calories, but there's a danger of overcompensating and being like, well, since I ran today I'm, and I'm hungry, I'm just gonna blah, 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 blah. Side note, don't go blah, blah, blah when you eat your food. You will spit it up and it will be funny, but like most of my jokes, no one wants that. But when I trained for my first marathon, I lost 30 pounds. I think there's something to be said about running. And then strength training will build muscle, which will increase your metabolism, which 
something something good for you. Really, it's not controversial to say that um, exercise is good for you. It would be controversial to say the exorcist is good for you. I'm not sure it's for everybody. And then seven, I'm kind to myself. I overindulge when I want and I don't feel bad about it. But since Christmas, we've had chocolate and candy all around the house and I've been having it sometimes and enjoying the crap out of it and I don't feel bad at all because I know that when I'm ready, I can get back to weighing myself and paying attention and, and bringing it back. And it's not even actually getting out of control because I'm still maintaining my portions, which I'm able to do because of all the things that I just said and years of practice. It is something to practice if you fail Try again, be kind to yourself, don't feel bad, don't think you can never do it. Everything that I'm good at in my life took practice. Except doing this. That came naturally. And this. Point is, you got this. And even if you don't, don't feel bad about it. Life is hard. Even if you're not doing all right, you can try again if you want to. That's it, I hope those lessons helped. And if you disagree with them, well, they work for me, okay? And if you don't disagree with them, sorry you had to see me get angry just now. You don't deserve it because you are you have really good opinions. YouTube thinks you'll like that video. You can subscribe right there! And you can support me on Patreon if you would like to. I do monthly live hangouts and I do early releases and scripts and notes for my videos. And since you made it all the way to the end, here's a secret. I ate an entire bag of Skinny Pop popcorn yesterday. I felt bad about it. I shouldn't have.